This system will notify you once you begin your broadcast. Well, welcome to another Top Producer Roundtable webinar. We appreciate each and every one of you for uh, joining us. And, uh, you know, and good for you because these are, these are the types of events and types of webinars that are specifically designed to help you become more successful in real estate. And I am joined by three top producers uh, from the Valley of the Service of the Sun, better known as Phoenix. Uh, we've got Sean Hahn, Kimberly Frost, and Isabel Potter, who are all, again, top producers in their own mind or not their own mind, in their own right, I should say. Well, Kimberly may be in her own mind, but uh, <laughs> really? but anyways, I appreciate you guys uh, joining us. Uh, and really, uh, more importantly, just giving up your time to to help uh, real estate agents uh, from all brokerages across the valley. Uh, so I want to, Kimberly, we're going to start with you. Um, I always like to start off with this question because, again, each uh, each one of you have been identified as, as a top producer. And I always like to just kind of sit back and go, all right, if I had to kind of knowing what I know now, uh, and if I had to start all over in real estate, um, because that's part of the problem when we start, we make, we do, we make so many mistakes. There's such a learning curve. There's so much that we don't know. We realize really quickly that, that going to real estate school doesn't really teach us how to be a real estate agent as much as it teaches us how to pass a test. But Kimberly, what would you, uh, what, what would be the, what would you do if you had to start all over? What would be the first couple things that you would do if you had to start your real estate business all over? Well, it's funny that you asked that, Mike, because I have started over. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I've been doing this for 27 years. It's my 27th year. And um, in 2008, we lost everything when the market crashed. So starting over, I would have to say you have got to get a good client relationship management system, a good CRM. I have to say that one of the things that I did not have back in the day was a good CRM. And I could kill myself now for not keeping track of all the clients that we had back then. All the custom homes that we built for clients, we never kept anything. I mean, my husband and I, we were shuffling for all these contacts when we got back into real estate. I mean, we never really left. We just, you know, reinvented ourselves mm -hmm. and did more fix and flips. But I would have to say to, to just work your sphere and keep that client relationship management system and work it, work do, it good. Do you ever like, like, I, I, I I think our story is very similar. I, I kind of got out of real estate when, with the market crash, and and I developed a, a very strong database. But my CRM system was a, a three ring hole binder mm -hmm. and eight and a half by eleven pieces of paper with people's contact information. I sometimes I, I will lose sleep. Like sometimes when I think about the hundreds of thousands of dollars that I left on the table because I did not have what we would refer to as a CRM system today. Right. Exactly. Yes, and there's some good ones out there, so definitely check them out. Yeah. And, and which one do you use? Because well, I know I, we're going to get people texting right away and asking, which ones do you use? Well, we're, we're, what I do now, I'm the team leader for West USA. I, we have one in-house, but I actually like Lion Desk. That's the one that I use personally. All right, Sean, what would be uh, a couple things that you would do if you had to, to start all over, starting your business all over? Uh, she stole my thunder. I was going to... She gonna, does that. Yeah, she does that. Was, She'll also steal your corned beef sandwich if you <laughs> if you leave it laying around. <laughs> Wait, that's me. Never mind. <laughs> So I, I, I was going to say the same thing. You got to build a database. You need to organize your, your clients that you've been working with um, and stay in touch with them. It's, 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 not, it's not enough just to have the database, but you got to figure out a way to, to reach them uh, on a regular basis. You got to continually put your face in front of them so that um, they see you and they see that you're still having fun and you're still in business and you're still there. Um, I was fortunate enough when I was in the business, I've been in the business for 27 years as well, Woohoo! but <laughs> excuse me. So 27 years ago, I've been in the business for six months at the time. And another, uh, seasoned realtor, uh, came up to me in the office. It was, I was with West USA back then. He said, um, 
so what are you doing with your past clients? I go, what do you mean? What am I doing? He goes, how are you staying in touch with them? I said, uh, I'm not. <laughs> he, so he says, okay, so you, 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 you made, you've made a few sales and, and when you're done with them, you just kind of forget about them. I go, yeah. He goes, okay, so you're relying on your experience with these people over the several months that you've, you've worked with them, sell them a house. You are expecting that to last a lifetime. So they'll remember you the next time they go to, to buy or sell a house. I said, I guess so. You know, I hadn't thought about it. I was just, an, I was a kid. And, um, he goes, okay, so here's the deal. If you forget about them, they're going to forget about you. Oh, wow. It's that simple. So he says, you got it. You got to figure out how to stay in touch. And so back then, you know, we didn't have all these uh, CRMs and stuff that we have now. So it what basically was just, you know, scratching things down on a piece of paper. So anyhow, I, I developed a system of staying in touch with those people over the years. And, and that's what I've, I've done ever since. But so today I'm kind of, you know, trying to get these people as we speak. I'm paying my daughter to help me organize everybody and track them down because a lot of people, I don't have all their emails because I've had them for too long before emails existed. <laughs> so <laughs> so we're hunting these people down and putting them into a database so I can begin to reach out to them and, and communicate with them. Oh, if you don't mind me asking, um, what, what are, you don't have to get into to all of the things, but what are some of the key highlights that you do? And I, I like to call this the, the, the ATC, the after the close process, because I think for me, that is where the money is truly made. Uh, it, you know, we, we always spend time chasing new leads. We close a deal, we chase a new lead, chase a new lead. But I think truly the money is, is made in after the close. You have anything specific that you do, whether it's, uh, you know, what you do for a housewarming gift or, or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. So depending on the client, you know, it's always nice to give them a gift if you can, you know, whether, you know, it's um, a bottle of wine or a wind chime or, or, you know, but I think it's really important to follow up with everybody. And I have a stack of cards right now. I, I have, I'm the worst. It takes me time, but I handwrite all my thank you notes yeah. and I, and I, and I make my own thank you cards. So, so there, everything I do, I try to be different. So I don't, I don't go out and buy thank you notes and make them. And, and mm. I'll share some of that with you a little later. But so I try to differentiate, differentiate myself every step of the way from my business card to the way I joke around with people and have fun and treat them the whole way through the process and, and, talk to them at nine o'clock at night or Sundays, whatever. That's the kind of stuff you have to be available for these folks. But yeah, so I, I try, I try to, I try to go one step beyond and, you know, have, have fun with these people and stay in touch with them. But yeah, I think it's really important to take the time, hand write a thank you note to these people and, and they, they appreciate it because they're not used to that. They're used to emails, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm always shocked. I mean, and, and, and when we, anytime we get anything in the mail that's handwritten, we'll open it. We, you know, we, that's just kind of human nature because, you know, we think might be something special inside. There could be a gift card in there. there could, uh, that, that's true. <laughs> that could be a gift card. Uh, all right. Isabel Potter, what a, if you had to start all over, and I know you came from, a, from the new home sales background. Right. Um, so you kind of had a, you had a little advantage, you know, when you got started. But now looking back at, 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 at your, your real estate career and you had to start all over and you could give yourself, you know, go back in time and give yourself two tips, what would they be? So actually I started 14 years ago in resale. I started mm. with, uh, Keller Williams and I was on a team. Um, but really what I would recommend knowing what I know now is to go to as many classes as possible. I mean, because the classes that you go to in real estate school, like you said, they don't teach you how to sell real estate. They don't teach you how to, you know, knock on doors and build a database. So for the new agents that don't have any clients to put into a CRM, really my recommendation would be, you know, go to as many classes as possible. Um, talk to top producers, ask to take them out to coffee um, in your mm. company, you know, and just pick their brain. Learn as much as you possibly can about the business. Yeah. And I don't think that stops either. Um, right. you know, I, oh, I mean, I, I, I still have relationships with top producers mm -hmm. from from a variety of different brokers. And, and I'm always amazed. And, and, I, and I feel like my knowledge base in my idea bank mm -hmm. of, of, and you know, people always go, oh, you got some great ideas. I, I haven't invented or created one, uh, you <laughs> right. know, but it's a compilation because I, you know, because of just the relationships that I've built. I've, I've seen what this agent's doing and is it working? Is it not working? Ask the question, okay, can it work for me? What can I do to modify? it and and just being able to have a bank of, of just ideas but you, you only get that by by having you know um 
you know, by developing relationships with other top producers. And then right. secondly, I would say is if you are going to build relationships with people, um, you know, can always consider your source of information. I find that new agents huddle around new agents, right? That's true. And, <laughs> and, and it may not be the best. Right. So the other thing too with that, so go to as many classes as possible. Uh, try to become the neighborhood expert wherever you live. I mean, I would start there. Um, but the other thing too is I would really look into scripting. I mean, it sounds corny, um, but honestly, from new home sales training, uh, they really teach us all about scripting and open-ended questions. So when you have a short amount of time to meet, greet, and convert a lead, um, whether it's on the phone or in person, if you're doing an open house, if you have that treasure chest of you know handy scripts that you can fall back on, it becomes second nature. And then just trial and error, what works for me may not work well for you. So you kind of have to figure out what scripts work best for you. And they work. I, I, it's an interesting point, and and Kimberly, because I, I know your team, you guys are really big on scripts, and 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 really one of the biggest uses that we use for scripts is, is handling objections, um, so that there's there's never an objection that should shock you or should surprise you, and, and you should be able to to respond to to every possible objection. But I always say that it's it's not so much new leads. That, a, that we need as agents or more leads as agents is just the training and the ability and the knowledge to to close leads. And that's a lot what Isabel was talking about, you know, in, in taking classes. And there's so many, I, I don't know why, but as, as agents, I don't know why we're not reading blogs. We're not listening to podcasts just on the topic of sales right. in general. Right. And I know you you provide a lot of that with your team. Right. That was the second thing. If I had to start over, um, my husband was pretty much my coach because he was already in real estate for a few years when I got in. But get a coach, get a coach, because we don't know what we're doing when we come out of real estate school. And exactly what you said, Isabel, it's so perfect to surround yourself with knowledgeable people. Well, if you have a coach that can teach you all the tricks of the trade because you're going out there blindly. You don't know what to do. I mean, I go back to the basics always in my, in my career, do open houses. Those are awesome, you know, and be the neighborhood expert. I always tell my agents that I coach go start marketing your own neighborhood. Okay. So let's, like let, let's expound on that. And all of you can feel free to pitch in. Uh, what are some of the ways that you you dominate your neighborhood or you become your neighborhood area expert? Block parties. Well, and, and relationship truly, building, <laughs> knowing what's going on in the community. Mm. Uh, so yeah, like the neighborhood that I live in, uh, Litchfield Park, they have so many events. Uh, we have the Wigwam Resort that puts on a lot of events. So just being out in front mm -hmm. of, you know, the neighborhood. And I always tell my uh, agents as well, you know, door knocking is great if you have something that will benefit the person on the other side of the door. Don't go door knocking and just say, hi, I'm a realtor, I'd like your business. That doesn't work. If you go and you knock on the door and you say, hey, you know, I'm a neighbor, I'm also a realtor, and I just wanted to let you know, this is what's coming up this weekend. Mm. And also um, my daughters are babysitters, so if you need anything babysitter wise, you know, be that neighborhood expert, be the go-to person um, for your neighborhood. It's, it's interesting. And and I'll let you jump in, but it's when we knock on doors or even when we post things on social media, um, a lot of times we don't ask the question of what does the recipient interest, what are they interested in, what might they want, what would they consider a value because – we all know a bunch of realtors, right? Right. <laughs> right. And I was just going to jump in and just say it's relationship building. It truly is. Yeah, I um – I, I like the idea of, of, we used to call it a farm, having a farm, right? Your neighborhood is, is your backyard. Um, but I, I've never done that. I've never, and I think it's a great idea. And I always wanted to do it. It was on my, it was on my to-do list, but I just never got around to doing the whole neighborhood farming, marketing. I mean, I think it's a great idea. I just never did it. You're yeah. too busy. <laughs> 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 Well, and, it, and it's okay. So let's go back to, okay, I'm a neighbor and, and I'm married and I would, I would say my wife would be the, the typical, 
you know, mom in the neighborhood. Well, what she wants to know, uh, she, she wants to know about neighbor, neighborhood events. She wants to know about concerts in the park. She wants to know what's going on at the library, what's going on at the schools. She, she also wants to know what stores are coming. I, I don't, I mean, there's some agents and is, you know, I mean, build a relationship with a city planner. Uh, you know, um, and, and for you, I know the city planner over there at Goodyear, Isabel. Yeah. Um, and so when I used to live out there, every time I, I saw him, I'm like, okay, what, what's, what, when's this coming in? When's this coming in? And, and, and I always, you know, and then be the guy, um, cause it drives me nuts. If I was governor for the day, I would have one executive order. Well, two get rid of uh, photo radars statewide. Um, <laughs> But my, my second executive order would be if any company, construction company, puts up a chain link fence and starts moving dirt, there better be a sign to let me know what's coming because that drives me nuts, yeah, wondering right, and wondering right. and wondering. Well, that's something all the neighbors are curious about. What's right. coming? Well, and what I do in my neighborhood, so my kids are past the age of little league events, stuff like that, but I am on the interest list for the city of Litchfield Park so that the rec mm. center emails me anytime there's sign up for soccer or, you know, baseball registrations coming up soon. And I convey that message to, you know, all of my, uh, you know, sphere, I guess, uh, in Facebook, social media, you know, all of those platforms, um, just so that I am the source and I want to be known as the person to go to for information. Because it is like Kim said, it's building relationships, having the knowledge, people pay us for what we know and how we can help them. We're not selling a product, we're selling services. Absolutely. Uh, have any of you thought about uh, doing, you know, creating a a neighborhood closed Facebook page for the neighbors. And and I know for a lot of people, uh, the immediate response I get is, oh, well, we already have three of them in the neighborhood. And so my response is, well, do you know how many, first of all, do you know how many houses are in your subdivision? Uh, if you don't know the answer to that question, start with that. Mm -hmm. Two, when you've identified the different Facebook pages in the neighborhood, how many members are in each one? You might have three and this one's got 100, this one's got 150, and the other one might have 175. Well, that's a prime opportunity. Uh, however, you might be in a subdivision that's got 2,000 houses and there's a neighborhood Facebook page that's got 1,800 members. You're probably going to have a hard time. But if, if you create a neighborhood Facebook page, and then what a great way to go knocking on the doors. Hey, I am a, as a concerned parent, I, I don't know. I want to get to know the neighbors. I want to know what's going on. So I've created this Facebook page. Are you interested in joining? And, and here's the link to it. Right, right. Yeah, I um, I think being on the creating a neighborhood Facebook page is really good. But um, I mean, I just I haven't done that because there are so many mm -hmm. different neighborhood pages. But another thing that I thought of that would be really good that I want to do, I haven't done yet, but to go to HOA board meetings in neighborhoods that I sell, but I don't live in. And that would be another thing that you could do as a new agent, you know, go and learn about what the HOA is doing. If there's something that's mm. coming down, if there's something that the um, homeowners would be interested in knowing what's going on and if they need to do something, that would be a good reason to go door knocking. You know, hi, I'm a local realtor in your neighborhood. I just want to let you know the HOA met last week and this is what they're talking about this is the information um if you oh, have any especially questions, if you're doing newsletters for neighborhoods exactly right, right. and so, newsletters are great i did one for the vistas at Akatio when we lived in there and we did block parties too newsletters are great and especially when you have that inside information about what the hoa is doing that's awesome to put right. in a newsletter because you always want to put yourself in the client's shoes mm -hmm. what's important to them you know, you need to put yourself and your needs aside and really think outside of the box and think, what can I provide to this person that will want them to work with me? I, and I would just throw out there, if, if you are uh, in a neighborhood that seems to be dominated with Facebook pages, um, then you might want to just take the next step. And, and it would be worth the investment of, of maybe then just creating a, a neighborhood website. They're, they're not as expensive and as complicated as it sounds. You can get a WordPress theme. Um, and then when you're on these other neighborhood pages, if you just make your Facebook just about upcoming events and HOA updates and so forth, then you can just drive people to that. So, uh, Sean, let's um, – what are what are some of the marketing things that you're doing right now that you're seeing that the most successful right now in your business? Um, I do 
I do want to just add one more thing to that. Oh, the absolutely. Whole, the whole website, Facebook thing. You know, again, I, I'm guilty. I've not done any of that. Um, but I, I to to add a little bit more value to add a little bit more value to to that process. You might throw videos in there mm. of the surrounding restaurants. I did a thing for a little while. And then I'll answer your question. I just want to throw this in there. But I, I did a thing where I had uh, I took a, a videographer with me. We would go to neighborhood restaurants, bars, wine bars, farms. Um, I went down to Southern Arizona, hit some Mexican food restaurants, a vineyard, a whiskey distillery, and I and I labeled this little show that I did Han the Town. So so <laughs> so we had this it. catchy little music. It would pop That's up, great. and it was about Arizona. It was just yeah. like, oh, here's some trails. I, I would take them out to the Phoenix Mountain Preserve. Here's the Phoenix Mountain Preserve. Today on Honda Town, I'm going to show you these trails, blah, blah, blah. So it was just adding some value to and, – and it, so I wasn't like saying, and if you want to sell your house, give mm-hmm. me a call. I wasn't doing that. I was just saying, here's what's really cool about Arizona. You should live in Arizona. Arizona rocks. And it's and here's huge a restaurant. right now because people see that. It's now video. they've gotten hit three times with the Nor'easter. Yeah. They, they see that. They're like, oh, I think I need to move yeah, to Arizona. Yeah, so I'd show them the yeah. flowers. You know, so I would just do fun stuff like that. But the video, they feel – I'd have people that just find me online and say, you know, I saw your videos. You're on your skateboard. Your dogs are pulling you. That's crazy. I feel like I know you. Yeah. Come over and talk to my wife and I about selling our house. And we need to buy a house, by the way. So so anyhow, so I would just say if you can add video to whatever you're doing, that would be really helpful. And if video you're not comfortable huge. on camera, the more you spend time in front of the camera, you'll eventually get there. So all right. So back to your question. You want to know Well, I wanted just to comment on what Kimberly said. I'm envisioning a a side by side Facebook post of me in a speedo shoveling snow and then another <laughs> one of me <laughs> shoveling sand and then market that to uh, the northeastern part of the nation. Which one would you rather be shoveling? Right. right anyway, so yeah. that's <laughs> shoveling heat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I even had I did a video one time how to get jumping choya out of your shoes you know like if you get it stuck to your shoes so it was just a, i was putting a sign in my guy was there with the video camera and i got choya i said okay now here let's show you how to get what the choya a, so what a great idea so you Sean. don't use your, you don't grab it with your hands right that's the main thing so it jumps in your hand <laughs> so um you know the difficult thing for a new agent is to get the clients as isabel mentioned you got to get the clients so you have to you have to make appointments the guy that taught me is my brother-in-law and my sister um they're still uh, richard is still in business and he Stress to me, he says, you've got to set appointments. You've got to set appointments. You've got to get behind the wheel and you've got to get people out and start showing them stuff. He says, if you're not doing that, you're not making any money. So, you know, if you don't have any clients, um, I get people all the time saying, hey, I see your vacant house over here on Coyote. Can I hold that open? Right. Absolutely. Go for mm-hmm. it. You know, and so I have people calling me through through our company all the time, begging me to hold open houses. Take it. Go. So those people, they're they're going to get leads. They're, they can do their, they can work on their websites or their Facebook page while they're sitting there in open house, meet and greet people. But that's, that's easy. You're just sitting there. You get your signs out everywhere and you run a few ads and you're getting your name in the neighborhood. And, and so, you know, holding open houses is, is a great way to, to, to build this client list. But once this list gets going, so this is where I'm, this is what I've done. I have postcarded the gentleman when I was six months in the business says, you got to stay in touch. I said, well, how, how do you suggest I do this? Am I supposed to call him up and say, how's it going? Do you miss me? And he said, no, you need to send him a postcard. I said, a postcard? He goes, yeah, yeah, send him a postcard that lets them know you're still in real estate. And so I said, okay. So I started sending out postcards and they were pretty cheesy. They were, they were generic, you know, happy spring, happy summer, happy fall postcards, you know, and they were like cartoonish. And I had this client that I sold a house to. And he says, why are you sending me this postcard? He calls me up. I go, I'm trying to stay in touch with you. It's in case you want to sell a house or buy a house, I'm your guy. And he goes, yeah, but this is, this is not, this is not good. This is not you. This is not original. This is you, you're, you're using some service here. And he says, it's not, it's not professional. I said, what do you suggest I do? He says, come up with your own ideas. I love do it. something different that sets you apart. Good for that guy. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, so I did. So I started making my own postcards and I found a, a, a guy that would help me design them. And I started getting creative, putting my face on other people's bodies or dressing up like people. <laughs> Whether it be, um, you know, the Allstate guy, I would, I would, I would do him, <laughs> or I would do the world's most interesting instead of man. I do the most interesting realtor. And for those of you who are listening, we're actually looking at some of these postcards. Here's, oh they're my gosh, this is Here's shiny cash with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. You know, so, <laughs> so everything I, I started doing this kind of stuff, and I just That's would just great. send them out as often as I can. Whenever I have time, I generate a postcard, send it out to past clients. <laughs> Excuse me, and. It, they, those they, are amazing. They remember those that I'm in real estate. So yeah. that's what I've done. Uh, <coughs> one more thing. The same client back in the day, 
I used to send out cassette tapes with <laughs> piano music for Christmas. <laughs> And they would be individually wrapped. You could tell we've been around. A and while. they were bubble. They were stuffed in a little bubble guy, and, and they would go out. And it was this guy playing this beautiful piano music. And he goes, well, "What do you? Why did you send me this?" I go, "It's your Christmas present. It's so you remember me next time you want to buy or sell a house. I'm your guy." He goes, "What if I hate piano music? What if I hate classical?" He said, "This is how much do these cost you, Sean?" I go, "Those are six bucks a piece." And he goes, "That's a lot of money." He goes, "You know what's better than that?" He goes, "You need to send me a Christmas card." with a picture of you and your family every year. That's what I want to Absolutely. see. I want to see a black and white picture of you and your family. So that was like, you know, year one or year two. And that's what I've done every, every, and my wife handwrites every single address and, and we send out. So we have a professional photographer that follows us somewhere into the state. We take pictures and we send in a card and sign it and off it goes. So those are the two things I've done. And they've, they've just been, they've, you know, that's well, because it's relationship building and you're being real right. And, right. and they want to see that you're real and that you have a family and they're interested. People are interested in our family. These are great postcards. So, so what you, what you could do with these postcards, I love this, choose your realtor responsibly, um, is then you can turn it into the, uh, the, sh the sh well, the Hanman, uh, a calendar, take all these to make a, make a calendar. That's a good idea. I haven't of, thought of that. Out, out of, write that down. People don't, <laughs> people don't throw away a calendars. Um, fantastic. I love it. Isabel, what, do you, what, what are some of the uh, marketing ideas that have been most successful for you lately? Uh, you know, honestly, it's the professional photography uh, for my profile picture uh, because people want to see who they're working with. Uh, so what I would recommend to new agents is not all of us can be as attractive as the two of you ladies. I mean, <laughs> oh, I don't know if whether you. you want to see Sean. And, well, Sean actually looks pretty dang good. Cleaned <laughs> he up. Does look good. Uh, cleaned yeah, up. Yeah, cleaned up. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're going to go home and shave yeah. that beard now. Right, yeah, yeah, Your wife, wife can thank yeah. Mike. Me, not so much. <laughs> But have, uh, have professional photos of yourself, you know, because we are in a relationship building industry. Uh, people want to see who they're working with. And, you know, if you put yourself in the best light possible, then, you know, you're more likely to, um, you know, attract clients. The other thing is to come up with a logo, a, a brand that will set you apart and that will make people remember you or remember your signs Every time they see them, they'll say, oh, yeah, it's that that lady on the broomstick or that lady that's sitting and on the sign. His name is Potter. And so we, we actually had coffee a couple weeks ago and you pulled out and I, and I saw it on your car. And I'm like, oh, because the whole <laughs> Harry Potter theme, I'm like, that is darn creative and well done. On Thank that. you. I actually have to give props to my husband and my kids because um, no, you don't. They're not, they're not <laughs> listening. Your they, husband's um, not listening, and your kids are in school. <laughs> um, but they did. They helped me uh, come up with you know a catchy logo that people are going to remember. And it's funny because I get people all the time saying, "I see your signs everywhere. I see your um, you know your logo all over the place." And it's it's not that they see it so much. It's there, it's memorable. So that's what I would recommend to new agents. Get professional photography. I spent $250 having a photographer take that photo and impose me sitting on a for sale sign and an open house sign. And, you know, it's just be unique. Set yourself apart. That's not too bad. Two hundred fifty dollars for all that. Yeah, well, no, not at all. For not the all. for the photo for the photo shoot, and then you have to pay for whatever you put it on. But right. yeah, no, it's not. But it's a it's difference. Not that expensive. It's a difference, and and it's funny. You know, you you brought that up because we recently sent out a blog for those that are subscribers to the Six Figure Mind Shift blog, uh, just about the importance of of creating a brand because we go we market ourselves first before having that brand to market and. And in, in sales psychology, um, you know, people will pick out people that they're familiar with. Uh, and, and the more that they see you, the more familiar, familiar they are with your brand. And the more familiar they are, the more they trust you. Whether they know you or not, it, right. it, it builds trust. So fantastic. Uh, Kimberly, what are, what's some of the marketing things you're having the most success with right now? Well, again, uh, going back to Facebook, everything's kind of on social media now. And, and a lot of my, my agents, I've I've trained and coached to get on Facebook. And I'm not a big 
believer of having a business page. I understand that you need to have it in certain certain aspects of a business, but as a realtor, people want to see the real you and how you live and what you're doing. They're very interested in that stuff and videos are huge now. So I, you know, one of my agents, Alejandra Palladino, she has just rocked it with this whole Facebook thing. She came up with a great brand and now she's getting leads left and right. Now, as far as myself, I just use the circle picks and the social, the social picks on that circle picks, the pick social, the right. pick social. Yeah. And I, and I, it just pulls up listings and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very heavy into my church and I am very active in my community. So all those people that are on my Facebook see all this and now they want to buy houses from me or they want to sell their houses from me. So really that is what's been really good for me in the last couple of years. Well, one of the things that I've valued in, and we, we've talked quite a bit about it, is, is about uh, just hearing ideas, sharing ideas, and, and learning what other agents are doing, because there's some very creative things out there. And so I wanted just to invite everybody uh, real quickly. We created a special uh, lead generation think tank closed Facebook page. This is not a page where realtors get on and it's for real estate licensed active Arizona real estate agents only. Um, but it's not a place to go on and gripe about other agents, but it's just really to, to share ideas. I'm always posting different creative things that I come across. And so we're going to send you the link right now. But if you haven't joined uh, this page, it's a it's it's put it on your must to do list um, because uh, it's really just a it's it's just for real estate agents it's by real estate agents and a chance to review to learn and see what other agents are doing uh, and so we're going to send you the link right there but there's a link on this slide as well so I invite everybody to uh, to do that all right um, I, we mentioned earlier and uh, Sean we'll go back and, and start with you maybe we can really kind of dial this in um, but you know based on the premise that you know, and I always say I could we, we the four of us, we could go walk this neighborhood right now, go knock on 10 doors and ask 10 perfectly good strangers of do you remember the name of the real estate agent that sold your house? I'm thinking nine out of 10 will probably have no clue because it goes back to what you learned early on, Sean, about, uh, you know, what are you doing, you know, for your your, your the people that you close? But what tactics, what strategies do you use to to motivate and and get your clients to refer you to their family and friends? <clears throat> well, I'm in the process of upgrading because um, right now I, I've been doing the postcard thing since um, basically day one. And and, I, and I'll have to say the thing with the postcards and really the term that we're looking for and why this is so I think so effective is because at the very least you're top of mind. Yep, and it's, that's the whole goal. My goal is when they get the postcard in the mail that they they I can put a smile on their face. I really am trying to make them smile. And I would look every time I got one, I would look forward to this. I want them to smile and I want them to remember me and then they can round file it. But a lot of people with the weird, the craziest, and, and I don't want to keep talking about these postcards, but they, they I will bump into people at the supermarket or I'll see them at the post office and the first thing out of their mouth is, or some people out of out of the blue that I haven't talked to in 10, 15 years will say, they'll shoot me a text and they'll say, I just got your postcard and I haven't stopped laughing, whatever. So I try to be sarcastic, right? So these are all about sarcasm and, and just having fun. And none of them say that I'm the top producer, any of that stuff. They just, you know, they just basically say, I'm still in real estate. I'm still having fun. Right. So, so the marketing I try to do is try, I try to be, you know, I try to not to be totally in your face in terms of, you know, here's all the all the accomplishments and all that stuff. So I just try to they have fun. They don't care about that. They stuff. really don't. They, they, you've already won them over. You've already worked with these people. They already like you, and they, and 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 so now you just you just have to remind them that you're still in the business. But so moving forward, I want to build this CRM base and start sending them, you know, some things of value that show them how their house is performing. You know, what are the values currently looking like on the home that they're living in now? How well is it performing? And so, you know, you'd have like a little picture, you know, that would have thumbtacks and they can click on it and it would show them the other houses in the, in the neighborhood. And then, you know, just so it gives them something of some value that they want to know, you know, right off the bat, they don't have to ask for it. It's just going to come to them maybe on a monthly basis where you say, here's a market analysis mm -hmm. on, here's how, and I'll have to look through these and make sure they're accurate and everything. But to me, that would be um, something really, really that's 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 the direction I'm moving in right now. I'm actually working on that. I love it. Yeah, because who doesn't want to know uh, how their house is doing? 
I mean, that's really what it comes down to. I want to know how much money's in my pocket. How much money? How much more money did I make over the last thirty exactly. days on on my home? And, yeah. And give me people, some good news. People, yeah, people will people will open that. Uh, Kimberly, what do you what do you do to get your clients to refer you? Or do you do anything special? Or what are you doing to stay top of mind and not letting people slip through the cracks? Well, you like I said before, it's relationship building. So most of the people that I do business with become my friends. So, you know, I, I invite them to any function I have or anything like that. I, I am probably going to start having a client appreciation party because I heard those are real successful. But, um, you know, that's it. It's really just getting them on my Facebook, having them connect with me, and then they see everything and we just build relationships. And that's how they just, I'm, I'm top of mind, I'm their friend, and I'm the professional that they know who to go to in real estate. What about you, Isabel? So, I mean, like you said, Kim, earlier, uh, the CRM, which for those of you that don't know what it is, it's customer relationship management. Uh, I also use LionDesk, but um, it is so important for the new agents that are getting started to get that set up right away and start using it, start putting people in. Um, one thing I like to do with past clients, especially first-time buyers, is I like to send them uh helpful reminders of home maintenance, you know, and uh, I have also shot videos. So I shot a video with an AC professional and just, you know, mm. talking to him, we interviewed and, and I said, you know, what would you recommend to homeowners to, you know, extend the life of their AC unit? So you shoot them an email and say, Hey, it's uh you could create a whole video library of these of, of you 12 of them. Could, right. And then, and then you had just through your CRM system, you mm -hmm. put them on a drip campaign. Exactly. And on month one, the person will get this one month two. And, it's amazing. And what you can make the videos can fun. Like, like you can, I got, Imagine me staring at an AC unit. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> well, and they're simple. They're wow. short videos, and you email them out. You know, at appropriate times of the year for Arizona. You know, you want to have your AC serviced in the spring. You don't want to wait until the summer when it's going to cost you three times. Yes what it normally would, um, but people appreciate you looking out for their best interest. So beyond the relationship, you are also their, um, you know, their advocate. Yeah. On that point too, just really quick. That's so, so good because I do do a lot of drip campaigns after the fact. Another one is on their annual, like their, their anniversary date of when they purchased that home, call them. Wish them congratulations. I, you should keep in touch with your sphere. Anybody you sold a house to, they say every three months. Right. Whether you get them or not. Can, can I take it to the next step? What I would do um, is I would on – on and, I, and I've, I've shared this story before. I got my, – my insurance guy, his name is Fast Eddie. His slogan is, <laughs> is, is fast pay makes fast friends. And he's 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 the character that you're already imagining him to be. He's got to be 85, and he's the best insurance guy. But for years and years and years, when he was doing our health insurance and and and, and life insurance and things like that, he would every single year he would come by our house for a cup of coffee and visit with us in our kitchen. And he and that was before we had kids. And he and he saw my kids be born, and he, he saw, saw them get older. And he's Fast Eddie. My kids knew who Fast Eddie is. And so what if on the 12-month anniversary, um, you come by with a full CMA, a three-ring binder, you don't know, get your title company or you build it yourself and and just schedule the time. Okay, now we're going to go through, I want to sit, we're going to have coffee, wine, whatever the case is. And we're going to go over to in, in the neighborhood and show you what your house has done over the last 12 months. Because yeah. who doesn't want to see it? And, and, right. and you want to get in their door. I think you want to get in the door Absolutely, as much as you can. Yeah. That's the, a good idea. The other thing I told my uh, team a couple months ago, what my goal this year is to um, personally meet two uh, past clients or um, people in my sphere every week. So the week prior, I set up the next week's appointments because it is getting face to face with people, you know, phone calls, emails, text messages, you know, those sort of things don't. Um, give you the opportunity to have that back and forth communication that you normally would face to face. So, um, you know, try to do that as much as possible. If you have the time to do more than two a week, I would recommend doing, you know, as many as possible. And a coffee is going to cost you five, 10 bucks, you know, I mean, and if they refer you to somebody, you know, that's going to pay off, you know, yeah, and, and and for those agents that are listening right now that are that are uh, I wasn't going to say blowing, but I just did. Uh, but investing, 
you know, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars each month in, in chasing brand new Zillow leads, um, which, you know, if you have a system and you work, it can, can be profitable. But if, if I was paying a thousand, going to your point, Isabel, if I was paying a thousand dollars a month in, in Zillow leads, okay, what could I do with that thousand dollars this month? How many of my people from my sphere of influence could I take out? Maybe not even a coffee, maybe a nice breakfast, maybe right. a, maybe right. a, a, a nice lunch. Because my my feeling is, and that would be my that would that would be my marketing budget. But I, I probably. I would rather chase their friends and family than, than spend time chasing down a Zillow lead only to find out uh, I they're don't want to work with them. With <laughs> or, they're already, <laughs> or they're already working with an agent. I mean, it just comes down to right. building those personal relationships. Well, and the, the other thing I wanted to say really quick, too, is um, as much as possible, keep notes, um, make mental notes of uh, interests that your clients or potential clients have. And as much as you can align that with your own interests, like I enjoy hiking. I just sold a house um, for this lady and she three times that I called her last month, she was out hiking. So one of the things now that she's closed, I'm going to reach out to her and I'm going to say, Hey, let's go hiking, you know, mm. because I enjoy it. She enjoys it. And it's just another way to, you know, appeal to somebody with what they like. That'll go, that'll go a long way. Right. right. Just becoming their friend. The other thing I did too, is I put in, um, one of my clients had a baby. So I put the anniversary. I don't know why anyone birth- would want a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I look at my Tim, I'm like, I'm so glad I'm done. <laughs> I know. But some people do still want babies out there, Mike. Um, anyway, so I put the birth date of the baby in my CRM. So, And then I also put a reminder right. to send a birthday card or stop by with a birthday present. I mean, these are just little things, anniversary dates, everything that you can get from your clients that will just bring you a step above of just being their friend. Yeah. I w- wanted to touch on one more thing. I really liked um, what Isabel mentioned about the videos um, with the AC guy, um, which reminds me I need to get back to that. I started to do that kind of work. I started to put together a library and I, I got one video done, but the sound, the recording was so bad, I wasn't going to go live with it. But I sat down with a scorpion expert, oh, right? Yeah, and I was I- interviewed her. We we're at a wine bar having a glass of wine and I brought a little plastic scorpion in my pocket, you know, and I, and I had a scorpion belt buckle on that was, you know, encapsulated. And so I was having fun with it, but I was an interview and she's, she's the local expert. And so I, I, I need to get back to that. I need to start building this and, and talk about termites. What, you know, people come from different parts of the, the country. They have no idea what a bull snake is versus a rattlesnake and, you know, stuff like that. What's a snake fence? So, we need we need to educate people and videos are the best way to do it everything has to go in the direction of videos now but along that same line one thing that the new agents need to do they need to invest money in a in a, in a good website mm-hmm. they have to have a website that actually works not just a business card that's out there that's electronic but something that's actually generates leads am i allowed to plug a, uh, should i not say no, anything no, sure okay so there's a company out here that's called ifoundagent.com mm-hmm. Those guys build a website that you can blog on, and and they and you can build um, you can build a farm. You can go around and say, "I'm gonna circle this area, and I'm gonna," and you can tell it to look for a specific price range, square footage, and then it sends it out. And then it so it's in cyberspace, and so people people will call me out of the blue, and I'm guilty of not. I don't have. I, I have not taken the time to build enough of these little searches that go out. So it has stuff built into it automatically. I get calls all the time from people say, "Hey, I'm calling about your listing over here on Spur." I'm thinking to myself, I don't have a listing on Spur. You do now. And I'm like, I'm like, so it takes me a minute because it catches me by surprise. Like, uh, what, what, what's the address of that house? And they tell me, go, oh, you know what? I got to get back. I got to call you right back, and then I have to look it up because it's someone coming in off of this website. This is generating leads that that, that are just coming through, and so it works. Yeah, I use the same site. So you use the same. Found, yeah, yeah, it's they they are incredible, and um and 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 now I'm 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 blogging stuff and automatically it goes to Facebook. It goes out to uh, Instagram, yeah, all Twitter, social all that media. stuff, just boom, mm-hmm. boom, boom. I don't have, I don't have to, it just does it. So it's really easy for us to, no, I, I'm, I'm just, uh, I want to just elaborate some more. I don't know if I have much to elaborate, but I, I want to, I, I like the idea of these video series is because what, what we do, what I've been guilty of is I create videos and, and I think they're okay videos, or creative videos. Sean, your videos are a lot more creative and, but your ideas are phenomenal. And, and Isabel, you got doing some videos and, um, but we post them on Facebook and we hope for shares. We might put some money behind it, 
but if you can create a, a library of creative videos, um, set up a YouTube page, uh, you know, and host them on YouTube, then going back to your CRM, um, you can now just create a, a 12 month video drip campaign. And if they're creative enough, like going back to your postcards, Sean, I, I think, uh, you know, people will be, people will look forward to, to, to opening them. And then if you use a CRM system, I know Lion Desk was mentioned. I use Lion Desk myself. What I love about Lion Desk, and it's not, it's not the only CRM system that does it, but I can track open rates. So not only can I find out who's opened my emails, but I can also track links. So if they click on a link or whatever the case is, um, I can I can see that as well. So that that's my this is my big takeaway from from this. Yeah, absolutely. Video is huge for the future. Yeah, people, I think people are more likely to watch a minute and a half video than read. A and if it's creative though, and something yeah. of going back to Email, what you said, something right. something of value. Right, uh, and exactly. it's the scorpion thing I think is brilliant. Who yeah. doesn't want to know about scorpions? Exactly. <laughs> right. And termites too, because yeah. people on the East Coast. All the are so gotcha scared. stuff. Right. We have yeah. spiders too. Yeah. Right. <laughs> my, well, uh, you would, now we have riff rats. Well, my, my nine year old. <laughs> Especially my, yeah. in Arcadia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my uh, my nine year old <laughs> have been making me watch these videos about this dude. Uh, and each video is like got 15 million views where he just he gets bit by things. It's ridiculous, uh, isn't it? My son too. Oh, I'm like, thing. like he got he, he purposely got bit by a Gila monster and uh, a, a centipede. And I'm like, you're crazy. But then I look down, I'm like 15 million views. I right. wonder if I could take the pain. Have 15 million people. <laughs> yeah. people. Um, I what what um. Let's talk about uh, you know coaches and and we'd mentioned coaching earlier and and I want to just emphasize that coaching is not just for new agents. I, I always have business coaches and mentors in my life. I, you know, the moment that I think that I outgrow the, their usefulness probably is the moment that, that my professional career will, will, will start to decline. But, but in your guys' experience, how important has a, a, either a current or a past mentor played in your real estate career and how important is it? Who do you want to go first? Well, um, you, you, you seem the most excited, Kimberly. <laughs> Well, I don't want us to all talk at the same time. Um, anyway, uh, I think a coach is so important. Um, again, my husband was my coach when I first started. And Does then, he make you call him coach? No. Coach J? Coach J, no. But um, when I got back into real estate, now I've never really left it. It's just it changed a little bit. So we were doing a lot of fix and flip remodels. And I was literally cleaning houses and cleaning the fix and flips when we were in our dire straits times, right? I mean, you just, people who are willing to work, you just get out there and do what you got to do, right? So uh, when I came back to real estate, when I decided to, um, I actually worked with Patty Sampson. So Patty actually really helped me a lot during those times that I worked with her and really catapulted my career to where it is today. So I would have to say she was a very good mentor for me. And of course, just anybody around, you know, Scott Colbert, the VP of sales. I talked to him quite a bit. You know, it, it's so important to have the, these people around you that are successful that, you know, you learn er something new every day in this business. I don't fact. care what it is. Right. It changes. Fact. Yes. It changes all the time and you have to change with it or you won't be around. So true. Sean. So I've never had a uh, coach or, um, I mean, when I first got in the business, it was my, bro my brother-in-law and my sister, and they were very, very successful. And we set up a deal where I think I did eight deals with them and they held my hand. And back then we were selling uh, FHA and VA repos. <laughs> so we'd had a motor home and a couple of big signs out, big banners that said free list of U.S. government homes. We'd hang a Arizona flag on one quarter and a, and a U.S. flag on the other. And people would, and we had a little a little printed out thing of some houses, some addresses of, of HUD, you know, uh, homes that were for sale. And so I, I had that influence and he was just, um, they're super hardworking, you know, always on the go, just flying. And as before cell phones, we, we didn't have cell phones back then. We, I would fill my pockets full of quarters and, and, you know, so, I mean, I, I followed their example for that first initial, you know, maybe it took mm -hmm. me six months to get through the eight deals, whatever. And then I was on my own. And so I'm, I'm not the best person to ask because, I mean, I, I'm kind of a self-motivated guy. I, 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 don't, I, I don't attend any rah-rah conferences. I, I, I don't have any mentors, coaches, you know, 
so I, I just, I just do my own thing. I, I rarely go to office meetings. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't pay attention to blogs. I'm not kidding. I just focus. I just, okay. I'm just all that. it's so I'm a kind of a different individual. I just do my own thing. I've been a one man show my entire, I've never had assistance. Well, um, so the last blog that I wrote, I put specifically in there, Sean Han, if you're reading this, I'm offering you $50,000 cash. So you, missed, <laughs> so, so, you, so you missed that opportunity. I'm kind of a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> Isabel? Uh, so me, uh, mentoring and coaching comes in so many different ways. And so, for yeah. new agents, I mean, you don't have to spend a lot of money. There doesn't have to be a monthly commitment to having a mentor or a coach because they're out there, whether it's podcasts or, you know, going to office meetings. I mean, I do. I I learn as much as I can from every different avenue about real estate that I possibly can, because if I can take one piece from, you know, a podcast that I listen to or a meeting or a class that I've gone to, it's going to benefit mm -hmm. my clients. Um, so one of the things, so I know I'm an associate broker. I've been doing this for 14 years full time, but uh, I like a quote from uh, Stephen Covey from Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. You always have to sharpen the saw. You do. I mean, you as a professional, you've been doing it for many, many years. You still have to uh, continue your learning. You have to you have to continue, um, you know, growing. I like that. I like that quote. I'm writing that. I'm writing that one down. I think also I, I think, too, we don't always have to think of think in terms of traditional coaching. I think there, there are different needs at, at different times. Uh, for the brand new real estate agent, a, a true coach uh, that's going to help them understand the contracts and writing the contracts and understand the process uh, is is invaluable. Don't don't try to do it alone. But but you also can retain consultants. And that's more of what I've right. always done. Uh, you know, when I first got started, I had coaches that I paid, you know, splits on. And the education that I got was in, invaluable, but as I moved on, um, I you know I engage more in consultants, and so maybe there's a consultant out there that that might charge a flat fee or whatever that that'll teach you about marketing and branding. Uh, someone who can just teach you about closing the deal, sales. There's there's a, all types of different varieties, um, and you just have to identify what you need and who's out there and and. Who, what other agents can you just, as we mentioned earlier, that you can just spend time with and that are doing what you want to do, um, that you can get ideas and that you can share ideas. And I would just also say this. I don't know your guys' thoughts on it. Um, I am, I am for the most part, I feel like I'm an open book when it comes down to my ideas, my tactics, the things that I've done because I've found the more that I share, the more that other people are willing to share. My education just, just catapults. That's true. I think um, at a, an awards banquet, maybe two years ago, you you um, you said something to the group. You said, "You folks that have been in the business for a long time and you're I successful, remember exactly where you're going with this. Yep, you need to give back. You need to take right. on somebody and and give back. And up until that point, I'd have people come to me year after year. Hey, would you teach me? Would you train me? I'm like, no, I'm busy. You know, I, I can't do that. I, I wouldn't do it. I just, I just, I've always turned. And right after you mentioned that, a past client of mine came to me and he said, um, and, and this kid, this kid bought five houses from me. He lived in one of them, rented the other four out. He worked two jobs, a mechanic and a bartender. Wow. Super responsible, hardworking, honest kid. And he goes, hey, um, I'm thinking about getting my real estate license and uh, I would, I will sell one of my houses to, and pull that equity and I can live off that equity for, you know, six, eight months while I'm getting started in real estate and hopefully my, my, my income. He said, will you teach me what you do? And I said, yeah, for you, let's go. And it was because of what you said oh, in, in, in the, I wouldn't have probably, I'm going to start tearing up. I probably would have said no, <laughs> had you not encouraged me because that, that thought was in my head. Now I got to get back. And here's this kid that, you know, has, he's, he's the right fit. He's hardworking. He's honest. And so we've been together now for a couple of years and, um, and he's doing a fan. He's just killing it right now. That's he's just great. having a great time. And that's yeah, all so. I do now is I just train and mentor agents. Yeah, yeah, it's really I have fun. such a servant attitude. That's all I want to do. And I love it. It just fills up my heart. Yeah. And now we're all going to cry. We're all going to cry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I, I'm 
I'm sensing a postcard coming in Sean Hahn's future <laughs> on, on this. I real, real quickly, in our, our last couple minutes, uh, we'll start with you, Isabel. Uh, for our new agents that are listening, um, and might, you can reiterate or regurgitate something that you already said, uh, but what's the one single piece of, of advice you would give to a, a brand new agent? I would highly recommend a brand new agent joining a team or getting with a coach because the new agent doesn't know what they don't know. I mean, and there are so many things, so many aspects of our business where we are representing people on the largest purchase, the largest sale Mm. of their, you know, entire life. Uh, It is a huge undertaking. So I would, and when I got started 14 years ago, I, uh, I was on a team, I was on a team for a full year and you really don't know what you don't know. So, I mean, spend a year, learn as much as you can, um, learn from as many different possible, possible, you know, avenues as you can. Um, and that's, I that's love it. That's fantastic. Well, well put Kimberly. Ditto. Same thing. Exactly. Just, yeah, just, get somebody to help you join a team. Um, you know, when you're on a team, you have people that are newer too, and you have seasoned people. And when you're all together, you just brainstorm different ideas and lots can come out of that. And then you can even buddy up with somebody, do open houses. And when you're doing it with somebody else, a lot of times when you first get in the business, you don't feel all alone on an island and you feel like, oh, this is more motivating. Um, some people aren't like Sean and self-motivated, you know, like that. Some people do like to have that person to motivate them. Believe me, there's been so many people on my team that have come to me and they just want to quit. They want to stop. They're they're done. They, and, and, and you've got to have somebody there to help right. them and, 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 you know, just to guide them and help them through the tough times because it's not easy. It's not easy. I mean, if it was, everybody be, would be in real estate. Right. Sean? Yeah, I I, um, I think it would be important for uh, a new agent to to get under the wings of somebody else, whether whether it's a team um, or whether they hunt out somebody. Like you, if they can go into the MLS and just take a look at production, who 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 who's cranking, who who's who's killing it out there, and then find somebody maybe that is a solo renegade like myself that's got the experience that uh, hasn't even considered, you know an apprenticeship type deal. And then you could, they could go to approach that person and say, look, uh, here's who I am. Here's my, here's my resume. Would you be willing to take me on a, in an apprenticeship type program? And, and, you know, you got to find somebody successful. that has a good reputation, that kind of thing. You yep. can do all the research. Everybody's out there. So I think it would be kind of a, a, a good way to go rather than maybe finding somebody that's already set up. That's, you know, that's already got a program with, you know, five agents going. I mean, that's just another option. I would maybe, do the homework, find those people and, and approach them and ask them if they'd be willing to take it on. All right. Well, uh, what I would do, I mean, I would definitely, uh, I'm, I'm of the camp that, that a coach and mentor as all three of you, uh, clearly articulated in a CRM as important as they are, uh, what I would do to find my leads initially. Uh, and if I had to borrow the money, I would, but I would, I would start with a thousand dollars, uh, for my marketing budget. I would identify 40 people and instead of sending out an email and posting on Facebook, hey, I'm brand new to real estate and uh, trust me with the biggest purchase of your life (laughs) and I don't have any idea of what I'm doing, um, I would find 40 people uh, that I would take out to breakfast or lunch and pay for them and begin to build relationships and identify top 40 people that – I'd put into my CRM and and I would would help them uh, and – and I would just focus all on relationships. All right, uh, Kimberly, Isabel, Sean, really appreciate your time. Thanks for having Ab- us. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. Uh, a couple quick announcements. Uh, excited. Next Friday, uh, we have uh, Eric, Mr. Awesome Swanson. He is a national speaker, best selling author who specializes in helping salespeople in industries. Uh, every type of industry and helping them elevate their game is coming uh, to Six Figure Mind Shift. That's going to be next Friday, March 30th. This event is free. We're going to send you a link out to it. Uh, I can assure you this will be well worth the time. You will walk out with some phenomenal tactics and phenomenal tips when it actually comes to closing and and selling real estate. And then we mentioned earlier, um, 
uh, about branding and marketing. Uh, I have invited that none of these speakers are active licensed real estate agents. They don't come from real estate background. These are people that own marketing agencies, ad agencies, and they're going to come and spend a few hours with us of just sharing the secrets to creating a brand and then marketing this the brand. This is a very, very unique event. I've I have yet to come across an event like this specifically geared for real estate agents. Uh, and we've done everything that we can with bringing on our sponsors to help subsidize this, to make this as affordable as possible, which I think 15 bucks, it includes lunch, is pretty darn uh, affordable. But this is going to be Thursday, April 12th um, at the Orange Street Golf Resort in Scottsdale. So this is our next six-figure mindset uh power lunch, but focus basically on marketing and branding. And almost every successful top producing agent I know has, has understands their brand. Every single person on this webinar today understands that has created a brand and is marketing that brand. So we're going to share those secrets. Appreciate everybody joining us. And if you've not part of our online community, you can uh, join our free blog at sixfiguremindship.com. Appreciate everybody joining us and have a great day.